Oh, this is the life, eh? Yeah, with a fish body like they are, nothing can go wrong. Go away! Yay! The beauty. Hello. Looks like the cops are having a day off as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're probably just here to check our licenses. Oh, don't be dark, Derek. They don't send cops out checking fishing licenses. Well, they're obviously here to check something. Oh, well. My conscience is clear. Unless you've got something to tell us, Barry. No. Derek Vernon Armitage, Barry Spencer Jenkins, and Raymond Zane Fletcher. Yes? <laughs> Would you mind coming up here, please? We'd like a word with you. Blanche, you'll probably be as shocked as we were at what happened the other day. The opening of the high country fishing season was rudely terminated in our case by the arrival of the Nettleton Mounted Constabulary, who appeared far from friendly. I want to strip... I want to stress you're not under arrest, but it would be in your interests to get into the van. What have we done? Detective Superintendent Malloy has asked us to bring you in. But there must be some mistake. I mean, my fishing licence is current. Uh, old Sid Malloy, well, what does he want? I don't know, sir. But since I've been brought in from leave, it must be important. Now, are you going to come quietly or not? I think we'll go for quietly. <laughs> You must know what this is about. I'm afraid not, sir. But you must have some idea what it's about. Incidentally, can I have your belts and shoelaces? W what for? Well, it's just standard procedure. Wouldn't want anything to happen to you on the way to the station. We're not wearing shoelaces. Just the belts, then. Oh. Oh. I know what this is about. It's you sitting off the dynamite at the river mouth. Oh, yeah, hang on, hang on. That wasn't just me. I mean, we were all involved in that. Yeah, but you lit the fuse. No, I didn't. Derek lit the fuse. Well, but, but we'd have been perfectly OK if, if Scaly Watson and his mates hadn't come along. Look! There's that car! Ah! 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 That sounds a bit nasty, sir. Look, look they had... They had no right being there. Yeah, well, I thought they were on the wrong side of the road. And it was, it was they who informed the police. All we were doing was legally, legally removing a stump. Get out! Get away! Get, ah, get, get, get away! Get out! I don't want to work with you. Get out! Get <laughs> out! Oh, Barry! <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> oh. Uh. Oh. I hear the four-wheel drive was a write-off. And Constable Pilbara had to wear a hearing aid for four months. He wasn't the only one. No, no, it can't be that. Still, they've obviously got a beef about something. Mm. Beef? <laughs> Hamish, the bullets come back to haunt us. Oh, yeah, and who christened him Hamish in the first place? Derek. And who was too wimpy to do the deed? Yeah, Derek. No, it was you. Uh, oh, uh, oh, who was it who didn't time up properly in the first place? Derek. Derek. Yeah. 
Let go! Oh, street! Quick, cut him off! No. My old machines! They're bloody. <laughs> he will pay! Now that sounds like willful damage to me. But, but it was Barry's idea. We should have shot him and got it over with. You had the rifle. Oh, I had the rifle. Oh, well, what about that time when you had the rifle? Yes! <laughs> Look at that. What? Where? Oh, nothing. Nothing? Not nothing. <laughs> so? Oh, there always used to be a deer in this gully. Oh, more than one. Herds of 50, 60. Used to be common. Get away. Yeah. I don't reckon you even know where we are. Oh, of course I do. <laughs> you know, I blame the choppers, Ray. Barry? The choppers and human greed. Barry, look. Jeez, get into it! <laughs> Did I get one? No! Well, I thought I had the whole herd in the sights. You would have had the whole island in your sights with that thing. Well, what about you? Well, I'd, when you opened up with that bazooka, I, I must have gone into shock. Well, come on, let's follow them. <laughs> Come on, Barry. Get right. <laughs> Jeez, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's the Pacific of Beats hitting the streets. What's on in your community? Bringing you all the latest news of our Pacifica people. <laughs> Tangata Pacifica tomorrow at 8 on Māori Television. Good evening, my name is Dave. Big shout out to Māori Television. Like say hello to my wife Jenny the Hill. I've been a heat babe. My boy Jamin, he's five on Saturday. Happy birthday, Jamin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Got something to say? Well, come on over to Moldy Television, 9 to 15 Davis Cruise at Newmarket, Monday to Friday, and shout, shout out! out! <laughs> hello, Dad. Hi, Mom. Hello, Dad. Hi, Mom. Hello, Dad. Hi, Mom. Iri 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 māua kutin. Personally, I'm quite happy with the arrangement. Ka re pai taku no hoi konei. What choice do I have? Ka nui taku aroha moana. Kōrero mai next week at 7 on Māori Television. Are you or your partner gambling away the things that matter most? Gambling can become addictive and cost you more than you can afford. Phone the gambling helpline now on 0800 654 655. Before you lose everything. Ahead of the princess, punk, are you <laughs> Hey, you got some cool toys. I can tell you got cool parents, too. How come? Because they put in a smoke alarm. If you look after them, they can save your life. What do you do now? Get down. Get low. Get out. Right. Now, what do we say to our friends in far now? Come on, guys, get far away. Right on. Dedicated, motivated, professional. Do you have what it takes to be part of today's Air Force? Right now, we're looking for avionics technicians, aircraft technicians, air security guards, and logistics supply specialists. If you think you're up to the challenge and ready to bring on your career, call 0800 Air Force or visit airforce.mil.nz now. Well, you told me you knew the place like the back of your hand. Pity you didn't know there was a fence in a deer farm. Oh, D.S. Malloy is pretty hot on firearm offences. Is he? Yes. Whose is this? Oh, that's 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 mine. Well, it's not mine. It's a friend of mine's. He lent it to me. It's a, it's got an infrared scope on it. Two thousand bucks worth. <laughs> and have you got a firearms license? <laughs> oh. I've got a, a driver's license, and I'm self-employed. Does that make any difference? <laughs> what is the penalty for having a firearm without an appropriate license? Well, look, don't get wound up about it, Derek. You'll probably just get a stern talking to. Yeah, it's not as if you've blown up a police station. <laughs> oh, oh, no. It's a Ranfurly shield. Didn't someone try to steal that a while back? No. Someone was trying to return it, actually. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
you nearly blew it. I only did what you told me. Look, if you've been dressed in a tutu and knit stockings, you could couldn't have drawn more attention to yourself. <laughs> come on, come on. You don't know me, but outside your police station, you may find a suitcase of considerable interest to you. No, 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 you don't even know who I am. Just call me a concerned citizen, all right? Incidentally, it's a, it's a green suitcase. Oh, there's nothing to tell them what colour it is, you nutter. Yes, I needn't told them it was almost new, but I thought it might have given them a chance to get a trace on me. You know? Oh, bloody hell, Derek. That's why I disguise my voice. Did I notice that? <laughs> what now? Well, we just drive around the block, past the police station, and see if they got it. Derek? Yes? I think they've got it. <laughs> there is nothing to see here, ladies and gentlemen. Could you please move quickly behind the barrier? Moving now quickly behind the barrier. This is a police emergency. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, Barry, you're saying... That is your suitcase. Yeah, that's right, just said uh, uh, officer. Oh, well, that, that, that's not strictly true. I mean, it is, in fact, my suitcase. It's what's inside the... Well, I lent it to him. Well, what is your suitcase, or his suitcase, doing outside our police station? Uh, uh, well, I was walking past, and I saw something in a shop across the road, and I thought, well, I'll just pop across the road uh, to see what it is. And I put the suitcase down, because I thought, well, there's no point. Is the car in the suitcase all the way across the road, and then I'm going to cut it all the way back again. So I did that. Well, it took me longer than I expected across the road. And, and when I got back, uh, well, all this was happening. Uh, sorry. We were about to blow it up. Oh, Kevin's, imagine blowing up the... And how come we got a phone call saying it was here from someone with a funny voice? sort of squeaky. Did you? Uh, probably a concerned member of the public. You know, they're passing by, they see the suitcase, jump to the wrong conclusion, and uh, I would have probably done the same thing myself. Now, why would you do that if it's your suitcase or with his suitcase or... Hey, with... Hang on, hang on. I know these guys. No, so we can take it off your hands, can we, Sid? <laughs> well, just a minute. You've caused a full-scale bomb alert. We could charge you with wasting police time. Just as a matter of interest, how much do you charge? Uh, uh, Derek, but isn't it good to see that the modern police force can respond so efficiently in crises like this? Yes, yes. yes. it's a credit to all concerns. We're always talking about that, aren't we? Yeah. Just pick up your bag and get out of here. Yeah, I think. Right. <laughs> Derek. What was actually in that suitcase? Oh, well, I, don't, I can't remember. Can you, Derek? No. But, 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 but it wasn't a bomb. <laughs> no, had it been a bomb, we, we would have all gone up, wouldn't we? Look, look, can we just stop for a moment? I think I'm going to have to go outside. gets worse when anything sets him off. You know, heights, pollen, animals. You mean this Hamish business? No, no, I was thinking more of a horse we had called uh, Lady Success. Do any good? Uh, she won. W once. Here it is. So that's it. Essence of horse. Give a stallion one whiff of that and he'll follow you for miles. Oh, jeez, do I have a whiff of that? Oh, it smells awful. Yeah, but not to a horse. So we just sort of dab a bit of this behind her ears or something? Nah, you spray a bit on a rump. Mix a bit with water and just spray it on a rump and then stand clear. Are you sure it's, well, legal? Well, it's probably a bit of a grey area, right? I mean, I don't know the rules of race. Yeah, I do. Every letter of them to my own cost. The key word is administer. You may not administer any substance to a horse that'll affect its courage, stamina or performance. But isn't spraying administering? No, it hasn't got into the system, so it can't affect its courage, stamina or performance. But 
It would to every other horse in the race. Precisely. And that's the loophole. So, you reckon we're in the clear then? No, oh, there's nothing in the rules about it. Well, thanks for your trouble, Brucey. Uh, what do we owe you? Nothing. I did it for the love of the sport. <laughs> We've got some spare members tickets. Would you like to come along? No, unfortunately, uh, tragic personal circumstances preclude me from coming. What's that? I've been barred from every race course in the country. <laughs> Zilla Māori versus Cook Islands, Sunday at 2. Right, if you had a dollar in one pocket and two dollars in another pocket, what would you have? Oh, sir, 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 sir! Someone else's pants. Dream career in tourism, the world's largest and most exciting industry. St George Seymour College, New Zealand's leading tourism tertiary provider. Phone now for details and let your future take flight. I'm doping horses. It's pretty serious. We were not doping horses. No, we were just sort of giving nature a helping hand. Yeah, and besides, Derek was driving. He's right. <laughs> it's never gonna work. Field of seven, unusual field. Six horses and one mare. Lady Success was first away, followed out by Ebony Rascal, then Master Mangrove began well enough from the shuffle, then Placido Domingo, then Tickle Me Pink and Gay. You're not passing us, come on! Come on! They work out of the straight and hello, the brakes go on up front and Lady Success led and in spite of the encouragement and desperate encouragement by the drivers, the rest of them are flat to the boards and showing nothing. They leave the straight. See, I told you they were. It's working too well. I mean, look. In front and that's not oh, like Colin McIntosh's style either. And he's walking out of the straight, the rest of them are flat to the boards. I don't know what's hit them. Here at the park, the stars are shining bright. The park was built in 1924, opened by Viscount Galway, if my memory serves me right. This crowd's getting awful grumpy here. They are livid with this sham of a race. It's a dead set bordel as they work down the back, and it's certainly going to be a tussle for the finish. I hope so anyway. They've got to move soon, or we'll all be late for breakfast. And it's Lady Success just in front from the shuffler. Then Ebony Rascal Placido Domingo is next. Then Gay Platitude. Lady Success is still in front, hanging in there as they come towards the turn. Where are the challenges coming from? They're going up and down on the same piece of sand. I knew you could do it. Look at them. Ha! We're leaving them in a wake. And they're coming into the straight and Lady Success is in front. Although God knows why. An absolutely... Perfect race! The field is almost down to a walk. The crowd is screaming for their money back and they're going towards the wire. And Lady Success has shuffled across the line to win it. Heads and noses for three the others all third, fourth, fifth and sixth, but who cares? In all my days of yapping, I've never seen such a sham. This is one of the greatest moments in my life. Sounds like conspiracy to default. <laughs> Sounds like you're in it up to your neck, Derek. What? Yeah, they're pulling you in for conspiracy to defraud. Well, if they're pulling me in for that, there are certain other people who could be pulled in for that particular crime. 
What are you talking about? Well, it's just that these two had a crack at being tour operators a while ago. Look, don't bring that up, Derek. Barry, if I'm going down for conspiracy to defraud, then a few people are coming down with me. Derek, it was those Americans who were to blame. No, Barry. You, you were to blame. blame. <laughs> you and your blasted Hamilton jet boat turns. Sounds a bit dodgy. Well, it didn't actually stop there, you see. You see, we had to relaunch the jet boat. Do you reckon you could hotwire one of those? <laughs> oh, look! <laughs> they've, uh, they, they've found a bulldozer. What are they going to do with the bulldozer? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not uh, sure, actually, but I'm, well, I'm sure they've got something in mind. Here they come. <laughs> oh, my God! insisted on lighting a fire, didn't you, Barry? Why? Well, to attract attention. Why else would anyone light a fire in a national park? Yeah. <sighs> what the hell's going on down here? Well, it's a long story. Who the hell are you? Oh, uh, well, madam, I'm Derek Armitage, and this is Emmett Follett Jr. and his charming wife, Julie. Well, who started that fire? What they did? There's my flaming dozer! What's it doing in the river? Now, yeah, hang on, it wouldn't be in the river if it had any brakes. You know, if blokes like... If sheilers like you maintained their gear... You stole the dozer! That's it! You bring us out here! You starve us! You, you get us stranded, and you nearly get us killed! And now you add criminal mischief to the list. I am gonna get you guys. I'm gonna sue you into the ground. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sue you off the planet! Oh, well, that'll be it then. The old US authorities can be pretty slow, but when the Supreme Court gets into the act, they always get their man. Do they? <laughs> you mean this could be an international incident? Oh, yeah. Extradition, probably. Oh, well, that's a bit of a worry, because it didn't actually finish there either. Did it, Derek? No. <laughs> now, I suggest that for the remainder of this outing, it would be best if we were to maintain a dignified silence. <laughs> There'll be the petrol tank on the jet boat. You know, I forgot about that. We're lucky to be alive. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's two of them. G'day, Sid, uh, Superintendent. Look, I want to make it quite clear that I was only an accessory. No, I was naive. Yeah. They led me on. Just being quiet. Quiet. Just the truth. Of course, the right to silence. Uh, what's this about? You must have had plenty of time to think about it, and you ride in from the river in the paddy wagon? Yeah, we were wondering. Comfortable in the van, was it? Not very. No, it was wonderful. First-class facilities, spotlessly maintained. Good. For the last couple of years, you three have made my life and my career pretty interesting. Well, I'd like a dull career. And since today is my 50th birthday, I thought the least you three could do was shout me a drink. Come with me. To the cells? 
to the bar. <laughs> I really think that this is... You can't do this. Uh, if you like, it's sort of a misuse of a... Oh, of, a, of, a, of a police vehicle. I, 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 I mean, it's... To, 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 it's no, it's, it's a fascism. Well, if you're not going to buy me a drink, I'll have to buy one myself. Mm, yeah, well. Oh, and while I'm waiting, I might just, uh, have a look at one of these files. <laughs> I've got here. Oh. Oh, oh. Explosives. Reckless disregard for public safety and damage to police property. Detention of an animal on unlicensed premises and cattle trespass. Unlicensed gambling and possible corruption of minors. Uh, no, no, look, could we buy uh, a beer for the superintendent, please? No, no, make it scotch. Double scotch. In fact, look, let's shout for the whole bar. Here's my checkbook, and it's wide open. <laughs> oh, this is very nice. A nice surprise for my birthday. Well, here's to a quiet life. So there it was, Blanchy. Sid agreed he'd put our past challenges and indiscretions to one side. And we naturally agreed uh, to agree with him. We went through Derek's checkbook, and I'm over the limit on my credit card, so we thought you might like to make a voluntary contribution. After all, through all this relentless interrogation, we never mentioned your name once. And let's face it, you were involved. Your reformed mates, Barry, Ray and Derek. <laughs> when the walls come tumbling down on you And the ground shakes beneath your shoes And everything you touch turns to dust you got nothing left to lose Look on the bright side When you're so far down <coughs> The only way to go is up Remember every cloud has a silver line And if you don't stuff it up Gotta look on the bright side Letter to Blanche is an Eisenbad production.